and the development of these could be several years. It's a nightmare scenario worthy of a sci-fi movie script. A scientist at this lab accidentally pricked her finger with a needle used to inject the deadly Ebola virus into lab mice. But the super quick actions of her colleagues may have saved her life. Once you get infected, uh, the chance of having a severe disease progression with potential lethal outcome is, is, is high. And so this makes this particular case uh, a very um, you know, serious situation. Within 48 hours of the lab accident, the unidentified scientist was given an experimental vaccine that had never been tried on humans. It was shipped from a microbiology research lab in Canada. The physicians brought forward the recommendation to the, to the person that uh, uh, was potentially exposed and the person herself made the final decision um, uh, and she decided for the vaccine treatment. So far, tests have shown that the scientist is healthy and free of the virus. It's not a 100% certainty the researcher was actually infected with Ebola. So if she stays healthy, science... Officials said the public was never at risk because the infected scientist was isolated from the start. With treatment still in the hit or miss stages and the reservoir still unknown, the main focus is prevention. The key to prevention of future outbreaks is education about Ebola virus where it occurs in Central and West Africa. The public needs to be educated and more importantly, healthcare professionals need to be educated. The Ebola virus spreads through contact with secretions and blood of an infected person. Caretakers, especially hospital workers, need to take caution and wear protective clothing such as masks, gowns, gloves, and goggles. Another major necessity is sterilization of equipment between patients. This includes sterilization of all contaminated materials such as beds and linens. Isolation of a person who has Ebola is an, also a major key to prevention. The hospital must then be sure to use strict barrier nursing techniques, as mentioned before. A thorough history of the patient, patient is essential to determine the possible exposures and to limit the number of people that they may expose. Prompt and proper burial of the deceased as well as proper disposal of fluid and solid waste are very important in preventing further cases. Bangone tu basi si mosala ngo tonge tani babani koya oro bangu bakoya wana ndemo na wana vanda ki deja na fièvre ba yité ba ko mananzela fièvre e augmenté e yi makasi ba yité ba ko mena 3 km na kele Mwana wana mwaya kutambla isu ya aliti. Asukuli, asali biloko tu, 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 akundiye. Nga na ali na, na senke kilometre na mwana kaa na tongo bato, bayi kukume langa. Balobi bon. Mwana na okuna ali, gravemo malani. Ana diare, epui ako sanja pe. Tukuma na lupitale, etomone ya malani. Alali na mbetu. Bangope, bakamatiye, nandoko ya njambe batiye. Batiye, nandoko ya njambe teye, kuma veru po kwa ale. To determine the best way to prevent outbreaks, researchers are working to determine the natural reservoir. Once they know the reservoir, they should be able to educate people living in close contact with the reservoir on ways to avoid becoming infected. If a person is so unlucky that these precautions don't prevent the spread of Ebola, an incubation period of 4 to 10 days typically occurs. As the infection becomes symptomatic, a patient will experience nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, chest pain, coughing, shortness of breath, observable swelling from the fluid accumulation in body tissue, edema, diarrhea, headache, and coma. However, Ebola is characterized as a hemorrhagic fever, therefore causing mucosal hemorrhaging, oozing from the blood-drawn vein site, and macropapular rash 
all within five days of the infection. All species of filovirus exhibit similar pathogenesis. The immune response is impaired from the beginning of the infection. Ebola virus first infects dendritic cells, monocytes, and macrophages, crippling the immune system. Cells that are infected become worthless in fighting off the virus and unfortunately serve as modes of transportation for the virus to move to other locations throughout the body, such as the lymph nodes, liver, lungs, and spleen. The infected cells also halt the activation and expression of immune modulatory and antiviral genes, granting infected cells the freedom to break loose from immune surveillance. This would be like somebody ripping a thermostat set at 72 degrees Fahrenheit off the wall and blocking all the air ducts during a snowstorm with the windows wide open. Premature death of cells in living tissue of the liver, spleen, kidneys, and gonads is a common characteristic of this infection. This is referred to as necrosis, which results in the harming of the inner lining of blood vessels and is especially harmful to the lining of the capillaries. The uncontrolled bleeding is associated with this infection is the cause of a damaging outcome to the organs mentioned above. Many people infected with Ebola bleed internally as well as externally from the eyes, nose, and gums. Imagine ripping the faucets off every sink in Berea and then fluctuating the pressure behind the water in the pipes while they are degrading due to poor management. Transmission of the highly infectious virus Viral disease Ebola takes place when a person comes into d direct contact with the blood, body fluids, or tissues of the infected persons. No cases of immunity have been shown. Contact with sick or dead infected animals like chimpanzees, gorillas, monkeys, forest antelope, or fruit bats is another way the Ebola virus is transmitted. In this illustration, many proteins are entitled to different jobs that are needed in order that the virus can accomplish infecting and commanding the cell to make more copies of itself. The initial phase of the viral infection includes a glycoprotein from the Ebola virus coming into, in to contact with the outside of the healthy host cell. A small vacuole that allows the virus to enter is created by the receptors on the external casing that bind with the cell's endothelial membrane. Soon after the virus enters the cell, it removes its outer casing and frees its nucleocapsid, which consists of all the single-stranded RNA material required to reproduce the virus. Upon the virus's arrival in the host cell, the cell's polymerase begins to replicate the RNA. Regular cell production is halted when the virus utilizes the VP35 protein. It interferes with the cell's inclusion information, making it believes that the virus's RNA is its very own. By carrying out the binding polymerasing activities and the all patterns linked to RNA transcript, the L protein is responsible for beginning the cycle of replication. During this time, the body's defense cells are unable to recognize what is going on. The replication of the virus is activated by the nucleoprotein NP and VP30. Despite knowing how the virus works, scientists remain baffled as to a treatment for Ebola. While out outbreaks are isolated and remain in specific places in Africa, if a more virulent strain capable of infecting hosts more quickly develops, all of humanity is doomed.